Hi, today, uh, which is uh, November 11th, what I'm going to do is uh, put out this video. Uh, I had a little, there's a little bit of a problem with the live video today uh, because I have some construction going on, uh, getting the roof uh, re retiled, and there's going to be a lot of noise in the background. So I'm doing this little video right now and put it out uh, on Thursday uh, before 2 o'clock so that you can all see it. I've got to, I'm going to go over some things I already started with, but i got a little more, a couple more things I want to point out uh, on the painting. And then uh, the next week uh, we'll come back and uh, I'll do, we'll actually start the actual painting. But uh, this is just to let you know that uh, I'm here and I will be going live as soon as uh, uh, my roof has uh, been repaired and ready to go. So I'm going to take you over to uh, uh, my browser page, and this is the home page. Now this is where uh, you're going to find the re the recording. If you call, if you don't find me on YouTube or Face or uh, YouTube or Facebook, then you go over here to my uh, my website everswatercolors.com. And you go to live classroom right here on the uh, navigation box and you go to the Everest watercolors live classroom area and then you'll find you'll find the recordings and this is the one I did last week on uh, November the 4th so you'll go in here and that'll be the uh, that'll be a copy of the recording here that you can take a look at so if you don't if you don't find me on YouTube or Facebook you can come here to my website and uh, find a recording. I've already got a space over here already for uh, the landscape, which we're going to do the bikers. I've already named the title of the landscape, Bike Rider's View. I'm looking forward to that. So I'm going to take you over to my uh, painting table and uh, go over a few things that uh, we, we started last, last time, and I'll pick you up on a couple other things. So uh, let's go over to my overhead camera to my painting table. Okay, now last, last time uh, to pick up, remember I, I have a, a picture here I took out of a magazine uh, of this landscape. And the first thing I always do, and this is kind of like a quick review, is I always crop out the picture. Find out just how much of the picture I'm going to actually be interested in. And I do that even when I'm doing plain air. I'll, I'll crop out the scene and uh, only pick out the, the area that interests me. Now, I like the mountains, I like a little bit of sky. I like the mountains, the trees, the little house on the on the hill here, uh, and the uh, fence posts, and the roadway. And I added in a, a little biker on the trail, which I think gives me a little added interest here to the scene. The next thing I did was I did a sketch in my sketchbook, and this is my planning sketch. And I took the same items on here. I took the elements of the picture, but I designed the the drawing the, 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 in accordance with how I want to paint it. So I put the mountains and I put the trees and the little house and so forth. And I added in the uh, added in the uh, drawing. Let me bring it up a little closer. The drawing of the of the biker. The advice I have here for any artist here is to do your sketch and to get your design on paper. And then what I do is I, I actually paint the painting from my sketch, not from the picture. The picture was good, just a reference. Gives me an idea. Okay. Then I transfer this sketch over to my drawing paper. Now this is 140 pound Gemini watercolor paper, 100% cotton. And it's a 11, 11 inches high and 15 inches wide, 11 by 15, a quarter sheet of uh, 140 pound watercolor paper and I, I transferred the drawing over to over to this uh, quarter sheet of paper and uh, I've got it all ready to go but let's go over a couple things in review uh, I showed that uh, I showed before also how to make some mix these are the color mixes I'm going to use in the painting uh, blue for the sky uh, green and uh, purple for the mountains and then uh, some of the greens here for the tree. And I showed some mixtures of how to make green. Mainly yellow and blue, of course, makes a beautiful green. And then uh, uh, I showed oranges in, in with the yellow, which will give you a little bit of green. And also there's a couple others I want to show. 
there's one here that I think is uh, kind of special. But before I go to that, let me show you. Uh, we also showed about brown. There's a brown color in the, in the mountains and on trees, and also the brown on the fence posts. And I, I showed last time how to come up with a mixture for burnt sienna. And that was the orange, yellow orange, uh, the, the pyro red, and the uh, ultramarine blue. And those three, those three colors gave me the burnt sienna. Now let me show you, and I mentioned my, I have a film on my YouTube channel, which shows uh, how, I, how you mix uh, burnt sienna. Now this is actually burnt sienna out of my palette. I'm using my full palette here today. There's the burnt sienna out of my palette. Now I don't want to mess this up over here. So let me go and put this on paper. So the way I test my colors is I'll put the, uh, on a test sheet, and I'll come up here and take a look at that. Now, it's not exactly a perfect match, but it's close enough for burnt sienna. This is out of the tube, and this is the mixture. And every time you mix a color, no matter what it is, you're going to get a different, you're going to get a different value, a different uh, color mixture, and so forth. And that's the beautiful thing about making mixtures on the paper, because you never come, you never come up with the same eye, the same color each time. You get a variety of color. Now, before we leave this uh, color mixing a little bit, I want to show you one more. Um, I'm going to I'm going to mix I'm going to mix my uh, Payne's gray, which is almost a black, and I'm going to mix that in with. You won't believe this, but I'm going to mix it in with yellow. This is a lemon yellow and a little bit of Kronakam uh, gold. And you put that in with the black of the paint is gray. And you get, guess what? You get a green. And all kinds of greens. You get a dark green, a light green, and a mixture. And even, I, had a little bit of, I had a little bit of burnt sienna on my, on my brush. That got mixed in there too. So you, that's a great thing about having picking up different colors off the palette that you're going to get mixtures on your paper that's going to be uh, interesting, a great variety. So my advice to you would be to uh, get your palette out, get your piece of paper out, and play with mixtures of your colors. Especially if you're going to do a painting before you start painting. Uh, play around with some mixtures. Get the colors you're going to use, the primary colors, and then start adding in other colors with it to see the varieties that you're going to have for your painting. Uh, before I leave, before I go any further, though, let, let's. There's one other thing I want to discuss. Uh, the why. When I started this painting, When I started planning on this painting, and I picked out a, a scene here, uh, and that's, that's for any artist that picks out a, a, a subject or so forth. Why am I painting this painting? I think that's very important. Because unless you have a, a, a real close association with the subject matter, it's not going to be interesting. You're not going to want to paint as much as you'd like to. So the why is very important. Now, the why for this particular one here, I think it, it'll be a good teaching tool. So that's my why for doing this particular scene. I, I'll be able to show you different mixes of colors. I'll be able to show you different brush strokes. I'll be able to show you how to uh, make sure you have different sizes of your, of your particular objects. And I'll show you how to apply different ways of applying the, the paint, not just with a paintbrush. So this is going to be a great teaching tool, and that's why I chose this scene. So that's my why. So having a good why for your painting is the first choice you want to have. Not just pick something uh, that looks pretty or looks nice, but you want to have a good association with why you're doing the painting in the first place. Okay, I want to get, that's kind of my, my tip for today is uh, pick a good why of why you're doing the painting. Uh, and that's a good reason to get started. Now, uh, now, here's a little trick I did here uh, with the, I took the picture, I took the picture from the book, and I scanned it on my, on my printer, took a scan, 
and then I, I cleaned it up a little bit over here in the colors. I cleaned it up here with the with the Photoshop, took out all the advertisements and so forth, and then uh, and did a, a little bit of uh, fine tuning on the picture. I got a color here, but then I converted it to a grayscale. I converted it to a grayscale. Now there I there that shows me the values of the colors. Because as you start out making colors, you look at values. You may have a different, you may have a color here. And then as you paint along, and you pick up another color, let's say, let's say you're painting a, a something blue like the sky, and then you're going to put in some trees or so forth, or, or say the mountains or so forth, and you have a darker color. Well, the value of that color is very important. This little tool here, which uh, I just discovered it again for a while. I, I haven't, I don't use it all the time, but this is something I think for, for teaching or for showing, is that you can take this color and evaluate the value. For example, this blue is pretty close to your value number eight. This value right here. Now, it, it takes a little while to train your eye to associate color with value. But teaching yourself how to know way you could do this is paint your colors on a piece of a test sheet like I have here. And then actually go uh, take a photograph of it and convert it to black and white. Or, shade, or shades of black or gray. And then you'll see here, just like I did with this photograph here, you'll see the values of those colors where the yellow is not as quite as, as light as you think it is. So by converting, by converting this into black and white, you can see the actual value. But I can, by association, I know that that's about a, it could be a level, it could be a level six or seven, but it's in this range right here. Now the darker one, It's not black, but it, it comes pretty close to, it's almost black, almost, a, that was section there is a black, a one or an eight, a one or a two. So this little uh, grayscale and value finder is also an interesting tool. Remember I showed you the color wheel last week about uh, how to look at colors and where they are on the color wheel. And also this one here is to show this little scale here evaluates the, the values of a particular color. So that's very important because when I go here to the, the painting, I want to be able to pick out the values that I'm going, I'm going to put on the painting. So let, me, let me show you how I, how I did this. I kind of prepared myself a little bit for this already. Let me put this aside. Now this is, this is again, preparatory. Again, I, this is a little bit, again, I, I chose this I chose this as a teaching tool, this particular painting. And what I did, I did a quick, uh, I did a quick uh, color study of the sketch. This is not the actual painting. This is very close to it, but it's got the elements of the mountains, the trees, uh, the fence line, and of course the bike rider and the, and the, uh, the roadway. But what I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm breaking up the elements. For example, these faraway mountains back here. I look at different sections of those mountains and what I, do, I have different shapes and sizes and as I come forward in the landscape I have other sizes and shapes these trees I have a shape here and I have another shape here as I come even forward the shape here of this uh, foreground area or co getting closer to the foreground this little area here there's a shape and of course there's a shape of the roadway but they're all different values also and when I paint this the lightest value is going to be the sky, but there's also some light values here in the landscape. There's a light, light value here, there's a light value here, and a little piece over here. So those, those will be my light values. And then as I come forward in the landscape, this will be a little bit darker. This is too dark here, but when I paint it, it's going to be a little bit darker than the sky. And this section here is going to be a little bit darker than here. And as I move into, as I move forward into the landscape, this is going to be slightly darker than this section. As I move forward here, then all this gets lighter. And there's some dark areas here because they're in shadow. So this will be a dark area next to the house and so forth. And as I come forward, this will be light, lighter. 
And as I get in the foreground, because of a shadow going across the roadway, it'll be darker. So what I did was I took this actual, I took the sketch, put it on a piece of paper, and then I actually did this almost did a, without drawing on this. I just went and painted the sections in. And what I used now, something else, not a trick, but just another little thing to think about. I used white paint. So I used white paint on my palette. And I went and I, and I actually painted it in here, I actually drew it out. I, so I, I broke this particular landscape into segments of sections of how I'm going to paint it. So now with these three things, I have my value study. My value study here I did on my sketch. I got my lights and darks worked in. And now I got my my value study and I also have a color plan. I cut my value plan and my color plan. Those are the two things I on a on a not necessarily a complicated painting, but a larger painting. Uh, this is what I normally do. I'll do a value study, which could be a real quick uh, sketch and show my lights and darks. And then I'll do a quick little color study. And this is a little more elaborate, but as a teaching tool, I wanted to show to you and demonstrate to you of how you would break the landscape down into sections in the background, the middle ground section, and then the foreground section. When you go to my uh, uh, replay, now this will be on a replay now because I've got, I'm going to just record it ahead of time. But so this will be a recorded video. Uh, you'll be getting this on you'll be getting this on the uh, YouTube and on Facebook uh, as a recorded pre-recorded uh, video. But when you go to my uh, video and look at it, uh, I'd like to see. Uh, give me a like. Give me a thumbs up. That that's, it helps in my rating. Uh, and also subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel. Uh, that helps my rating and also will will also notify you of uh, the future paintings and then follow me on facebook also uh, as you do a like and then uh, you'll be able to go to the videotape and be able to play it back as often as you want and the videotape there you can stop the video and uh, go over uh, anything i covered and so forth okay i'll be back i'll be back live next thursday so i'll see you then live and uh, we'll finish up that painting